Gentlemen, if you're wondering why Rek'Sai Top is making its way into your games, well, look no further than this week's LEC games. Broken Blade pulled it out in the top lane, and at the moment it has a 53% win rate and starting to take over solo queue. All the pro players, the Koreans, the American pros are starting to copy it as well. You have Zayas, you have Keen, all these top tier pros copying it. Today, we're going to jump onto the rift and break down Broken Blade's Rek'Sai Top. Jumping onto the rift now, rune page in the bottom left, you go Grasp tenacity and essentially what happened here is they did the mini rework with Rek'Sai a few patches back and nobody really noticed they made a couple of quality life changes to him to her sorry and she has just slowly become completely broken in the top lane because of the passive healing um the base stats obviously they wanted Rek'Sai to be a jungler but they just did overthought they didn't think that it could possibly be played in lane so I've seen a lot of these top laners and even mid laners I saw Showmaker I saw Caps all testing out in the mid lane. And you'll see this game, why it's broken and why the numbers just don't lie. Because when there's a champion that's never been, people picking it up, never been played before, they're playing at top lane with a 55 plus percent win rate. Obviously there's something numerically wrong. Broken Blade's gonna let it shove in. And I have had a couple of people testing this out in my own games and inting, but hey, if you get into by a Rek'Sai top, not my fault. Blame, if anybody, blame Broken Blade. Don't, don't come knocking. So we're going to get poked down here a little bit. Great gank setup, by the way. You have so much CC. You have a flash knockup. You have your Barrow. And we will slowly make our way back towards full health. I don't expect, oh, this is actually, Lee Sin might look for a gank here, but the wave's too big, I think. Let's see if maybe we can get a flash out. It's the ghost. Dodges out. Hate when a jungler tries to gank you with a wave this big. It's always so annoying. I will not be addressing the new haircut, by the way, gentlemen. I don't want to talk about it. As we just get juked out for that knockup. You need to know your numbers a little bit with these all-ins. Because don't be scared to get down to 10-20% health. You'll see him continuously use this. Poking this Twisted Fade out. Pool Party Rek'Sai Elite Skin. If you're not running Pool Party Rek'Sai, don't even bother playing this strategy. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. And Broken Blade always is actually innovating in the top lane. He spammed TF top when it was meta. Rek'Sai top. He's playing. Gets the flash. Lee Sin. Can he finish? Can he finish? Can he finish? Gets the slow. Gets the poke. Q's going to go through. And... That almost was a disaster. Wave is still in a good spot though, so we're going to survive. And let me know what you think about this pick, gents. Do you think it's going to be flavor of the month? Do you think Riot's going to patch it out? Nice little freeze there. But it is going to get broken. I wouldn't be surprised if Broken Blade looks for a recall over the next shove. My boy sitting on 800 can probably get some health and this build revolves around stacking health guys you're not going lethality you're not going damage by going tank you have damage trust me the base numbers in this champion are enough it's fine he was thinking about trying to hustle the demolish proc there you should go back here maybe get you can probably get boots what has he got no 800 gold probably get double rubies yeah, double rubies is actually a very stat heavy. Like statistically, it's very mathematically, it's very efficient. Um, the raw base stats you get for the hell from ruby crystal is great. So you, you stack these two, um, along with obviously the synergies with Rex size kit, and you ain't gonna be dying, son. Is TF gonna try and hold this freeze? And I haven't been paying attention to LCK. I don't know if anyone's played it in the LCK yet. Zayas was practicing it in solo queue. This build first I saw on, I think, LOL Dobby on his YouTube channel. So shout out to Dobby. There's a Korean guy that went from like D4 to maybe Masters playing Rek'Sai top. And then people slowly started to catch on and practice it and realize how broken it is. Why does it always happen in Korea with these setups? I swear. We go in, get the knock up. Oh, we are six off of like one more creep. Ooh, 
La la la. Poke, poke, poke. Level six. Poke and ult is gonna get a kill here if we can get on top. Q, hits the ult, should finish. And do you see how annoying it is? And you'll continuously do this, and you'll just keep realizing that Rek'Sai is slowly healing to full. Not even slowly, like, do you, like right now, look at, like, he is just gonna be full health in no time here. While still having a massive damage with the Fury. And I always forget, Rek'Sai is a she. I guess she has so much aggressive and, and look at the, almost full health again, gentlemen. Look at this. Sometimes I just forget. As we're going to get a burrow. I'm going to knock that up. TF going to throw the ghost. Hits the ult. Oh, I don't think we do this. Let's leave since has added almost no value to the lane. Piss off, buddy. And we're going to head back. Make our way towards the Sunfire. And TP in. You kind of feel bad for the Twist of Fate at this point because he doesn't have anywhere near, near enough damage to kill the Rek'Sai. You can, of course, try to counter this if you want to go something crazy. You could run Vayne top. There's plenty of counters, hypothetically, but it's just... It's because it's so easy to play. Look at this shit. It's just so easy to play and the base numbers are too high. Crunch, 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 crunch. Chomp. Has ult. Maybe wants to try and look for the dive here. Enemy Vi though is hovering, so we have to be careful as we... Get another solo. Vi is here. But I'll be honest, I don't even think she wants this. And Broken Blade is obviously not scared at all. He doesn't. He's actually just trolling at this point. Just like in their face. And you can also set up, obviously you have these um, borrows as well. You're setting them up. You can have them for great gank or even escape in the top lane. So we are sitting on 1.1k. CS isn't the greatest, but if you're ahead of your lane opponent, I, oh, I I never see an issue with being like mediocre CS. Get a 10, 20 CS lead over your opponent. Even if you got 20 CS versus their 10, like it's still solid. All in day's work. And your goal, obviously, with this setup is just to be perma isolated. You're split pushing as much as possible, causing chaos. I wish someone like the Baus would have picked up on this earlier. I definitely think it's going to get nerfed. I think they're just going to bring the base damage down, the base numbers down. We land the knockup. Oh, we're getting pretty low health here. Must be careful. Just kidding. We don't need to be careful. Why are people still playing TF top? Let's give it up. It's over. Let it die. Knockup lands. Yes. 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 And this game's turning into a little bit of a stomp. I'm hoping it goes late. I want to talk about the build a little bit more. Praying that they throw. Broken Blade usually... Actually, I play with him. I play with Broken Blade a lot. He's usually a pretty solid player. Very reliable carry, if you know what I mean. I played solo queue with a lot of pros. And some of them play very well, but I can't trust them. Because, like, they get their leads. And then... Instead of, like, winning the game, they will just, like, test that gold and that, that, that strength, and they'll end up throwing. Very annoying to play with pros like that. AKA Caps. They just get the gold, and they say, okay, let's see what I can do. And then it's like, enemy, teammate has been slain. 1,000 bounty. And yeah, so story with the haircut, I will talk about it a little bit. So I did cut it on stream, or my assistant cut it. So hopefully some of you guys saw that. Then I went in, the next day to my barber and I said yo fix me up he said got you fam I'm not even kidding it took 45 minutes I was already bald to line me up took my hairline back line me up even it out $45 I don't know how 
with like almost no hair as opposed to my normal haircut, long luscious hair normally, took, takes 30 minutes. This one took 45, cost the same. I guess you pay for time with haircut, not amount or weight or mass of hair, which does make sense, but still. I went in there thinking it was going to be a $2 fix up quick trim and I walked out uh, more bald and more bankrupt. Let's just say that. That's why I think she's found herself a meal. I highly doubt it. Leeson comes in to ruin the show as per usual five times now. Getting a little bit embarrassing for this Miss Lee Sin. It's only a 3k gold lead. It looks, it feels like it's way more, but the enemy Jinx is farming phenomenally. We go in. Flash actually used here. Man. TF has Swifty boots, so it just makes this, this so much harder. If you're versing your opponent with no mobility and especially no boots, you'll be landing this, these knockups so much easier, by the way. Way easier. As we head back. You keep thinking he's on a base, and then he just realizes he'll be full health. Maybe if TF hits four items, he'll be able to start wreaking havoc. Poor guy. Okay, now we go back. What are we sitting on? 1k. Wouldn't mind going like Ninja Tabai here. Okay. Jinx is thinking about going for the carry. Actually goes Mercs. I was thinking Steel Caps here because of the Jinx and the TF, but... Ooh. Is he listening to me? No. I guess he wants to be the, get rid of that Twisted Fate stun. We come back into the top lane. Now what item, you've already got armor, you've got health, what item do you want? On a champion that wants to heal. Does Spirit Visage make any sense? Yes it does. We're full tank, by the way. And you'll just see, you kill through base. Demolish, thank you very much. And don't be afraid sometimes, it is ult half health and then look to finish with your, um, your follow-up. You don't only have to ult for execute. Really good, really healthy, right? And I do think Rek'Sai needed like this little mini rework. She was not getting any playtime. Because way back in my day, Rek'Sai, believe it or not, was like a very prominent jungler. And, it, and she had an ultimate that was a global ultimate. She could ult. And that would actually teleport her across the map with one of her little uh, borrows. They removed that. She had a couple of patches of fame and then just died down. I don't think Riot really liked her. And now they're just kind of trying to restructure her. And, uh, I don't know. Whenever Riot try to do things like this, most of the time they get it wrong, let's be honest. They get, they get so fixated on like, oh, let's make, let's make her a stronger jungler. That Twisted Fate needs to be banned. That Twisted Fate needs to be banned. As we are actually going to look for a 1v4 play here, and I don't- I think it's- We're going to kill, but it's going to be completely int as we give- Wait, enemy team has 2k f Wait, they have 2k gold lead. Ah. I guess Pike. Got Tank Katarina as well. Oh my god. Don't we love League of Legends, guys? Dragon's starting to get pinged. What are we? 15 minutes in. That's a 1k gold lead over TF, but of course TF finishes Carl. Great farming. He should be fine to come back into the game. Broken Blade completes the Spear of Asajj. What do we get? 25% more healing, by the way. Plus 100% base health regen. Oh my god. Tank items. Don't we love them? It kind of, this honestly kind of feels like that 
Drain Tank Volley that took over. This kind of feels like the new flavor of the month for that. It's probably going to last a few patches and get taken out. If you're early on these things, by the way, like, let's say you discover this day one, you're probably going to get two to two to three weeks, maybe, sometimes longer, of just abusing something that's way overtuned. The problem is, once it's patched and nerfed, you're very likely to just drop back to your original rank. But the things you learn... Like, I always say this. People... You know how people buy accounts and masters and stuff? Genuinely, sometimes... Yes, they're going to drop rank, but they learn things, right? It's I'm not encouraging to buy accounts higher than your grade. But sometimes, you learn a lot from versing better players or being, like, in better games. Even if you're slightly outclassed. Just a little food for thought. We need to kill the Jinx. Kill the Jinx, win the game. Pretty simple win con here. Did we miss that? Broken Blade. G2 looking solid this year. I definitely think they're looking more beatable this year, though. Um... I think they're... They're still number one. I think Fnatic and maybe Rogue. I don't know who else in the LEC are doing well. I always just assume G2 are winning. But, uh... MSI will be interesting this year. It's over in China. You have the likes of BLG, their super team. JDG with Ruler. You got a lot of super teams in China doing well. And then, of course, you have Gen G, new super team put together with T1, Faker. And then over in NA, you got Team Liquid doing well, Flyclass doing well, C9 collapsing. That's pretty much the pro scene. And then you have some Southeast Asian teams that are always kind of like sleeper builds that people don't really watch enough. My prediction this year, and don't 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 get it twisted, uh, I didn't predict right last year, but I think Gen G clean up both international events. So here we go. Let's show a little bit of our strengths as we tank up for 12 days. Katarina thinks that she can go in. We have so much magic resist here. We do not go down. And... Not for lack of trying. Katarina is trying her hardest. But we're going to move in. And I actually think this has been a bit of an int. He's going to ult. <coughs> I don't know what he was thinking there. Limit test, and they're all going to go down. Jinx cleans house. Finally completes his mercs. Pretty sure Kite Machine is a pro, by the way, but I forget who. Maybe it was Comp. And we have any IRL also. This guy is Annie. I played against him so much in EU. I thought he was going to be... Like, do you know how you verse an Annie main and they're like, they're bad at the game? But then... Just they're, they're playing Annie, so like fundamentally they just climb. Because it's like, they're not good at the game. And they make up for that by picking a simple champion. He is actually good at the game. I was so surprised. Like, his movements, his macro, his lane. Like, he was good at the game. Surprised me. I got deleted so many times by that guy's Annie. Does not surprise me that he hits 1k plus LP challenge in most seasons. We're gonna get a bit of a team fight here. Katarina trying her hardest. Not gonna be enough. We're gonna ult in. Tank 5. And we... Oh my god. Thank god for Renata. We almost went down. That's going to be a complete ace. And him tanking there. I don't know how much he healed. Him tanking there. Honestly, every single one of their abilities. And it just allows Aphilios to completely take over the team fight. All those autos. And gold lead after this. Baron power play should be back in the favor of blue side. 
So we complete. Now, this is the three item core build Sunfire, Spirit Visage, Sterax. After this, you can go whatever you want. These are the three cores. You build these, you just initiate team fights, you split push. You will win most of your games. Not every game. Everybody makes mistakes. Not me, but most people. We're online here. Stay tuned. Can enemy Jinx carry? Yes, they can still carry. Probably needs a Lord Dommies though, if I'm honest. Getting through 4k health Rex Eye with 150 armor, probably not easy. And usually split pushing on tanks, not good, but just having this demolish, it really did change the game for split push tanks. It's such a good item for split pushing. Such a good rune. Boost of Fate. Oh! Jinx gets the shutdown onto the Annie, but what are they going to be able to get for that? Probably nothing. Pike, look, this could be really bad. This could be really bad. Look at the TF. Deep flank. Broken Blade goes in. Okay. Count on ult to finish the Pike off, but he's going to leave his team alone. Philios. Almost kites it out. Actually does really well. I'm surprised. I feel he also lived a lot longer than I thought. And... A couple of pings on the Rek'Sai now. Everybody getting pissed. You verse this in-game and you're real... You watch it and you think, oh, it's pretty strong. But you verse it in-game and you will just realize... Um, the, str the strength of the pick. We tunnel out, later, later, later. Careful, no getting picked here. Speed, momentum, engage. Having flash knock up for the enemy carries as well is, is essential. You can pretty much guarantee the Jinx, if no flash, dies. Okay, fight breaking out. Renata might almost go down. We find the Katarina. We're going to be able to slowly take her down. TF lands the stun. Lee Sin kick. Oh, we can't quite get on top of the Jinx. He's trying to look for the poke here. No! Kill! Use that ultimate. We execute the Vi. They still can't end. This Jinx is going to get to late game full build, by the way. Hmm. Five K gold in the lead. No dragon win cons for either team, though. Get in. There you go. Mm. TP by Katarina. Twisted Fate ult coming in deep. And they're just trying to focus down the Annie first. Broken Blade doing his best job to try and help his team out. But he's going to get CC'd up. Sterax proc'd. Not going to be able to survive through this one. Jinx picks up the shutdown. And 25 minutes in, I genuinely think it's going to come down to the wire. Hmm. I don't know what to think about this, Lee Sin. It's had moments of brilliance, but also moments of complete shiteness. Okay, Aphilios, careful. We one-shot the pike. Aphilios doesn't need to be careful. Hits that ultimate. That should be able to take them both down. Flash is in for the Jinx. Well, this should be a textbook play to show why Aphilios in the, in the hands of challengers. Like, the champion is just different. 
TP coming in. 30 second death time is 26 minutes. Hmm. Usually you can end with this. I don't know if it's worth risking though. What do you guys think? Oh, we have Flash. That means we're going to one-shot the Twisted Fate. And that means it's going to be GG. Pike not able to... No way this Pike can do anything. They're going to take the win. Gentlemen, that is Rek'Sai top. Broken Blade. I think it's just dumb. I think it needs to be out of the game. It shouldn't be a thing. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you on my next video. Good night.